So I've been doing this um, challenge with Jason, as you know, um, if you'd followed the first diary, um, and we, we were talking about that, and yes, I'm standing up in my studio, and I haven't got my painting gear on, because... been playing around with this a little bit over the last couple of days i got my jason mug <laughs> having a cup of tea standing back having a look jason yes <laughs> i've been playing around with this um what i did i put um a burned umber wash in i went in first of all with a burnt umber and i was going to do a, a grisaille painting and then do some washes over it which which I attempted to do and it didn't really work out the way I wanted it to it's still a little bit vibrant and I'm still trying to work out um, the colors he actually used so on reflection um, I decided to use um, a, a cerulean blue an ultramarine blue and a Windsor blue yes I had some Windsor blue and I thought it's quite a nice warm blue um, it's, it's bordering more on a navy blue which is is it's in his jacket actually um, so the burn dumbo didn't really work i wasn't happy with that i'll show you a little bit of that process now um i'll show you exactly what i did before i got to this stage how was that that's easier isn't it
and I'm back. <laughs> so that I played around with that. That took me about an hour or so. Yeah, it really did. And it's, this is not an easy process. So I I've got to this stage now. Um, I put a few uh, light glazes of different types of blue in a little bit of um, burnt ember, and I've just been playing around with the sky because the sky is quite dark. Um, so I thought, well, let's just put a couple of glazes on and see exactly how I get on. I've got about half hour, so this is a diary um, video. It's not exactly like you normally see us doing, but I thought it's, it's a good way because this is going to take me weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks, and I've, and I've really got to be in the mood to do it. So anyway, further ado, let's go on. I'm just using one camera today. So anyway, I got a little bit of cerulean blue. And I got a little bit of burnt number. I'm just going to go into a little bit of burnt number, and I'm just going to lightly glaze over a section of the sky. I want to darken this blue down. Um, I wanted to look that dirty type of colour, and the only way I can do that is actually glaze with some burnt number over the blue and that. That I've done just to get I'm not going to do this sky 100% copied because it's just not what I want to do I I want to get that um Gainsborough looking effect hello Molly are you come in to see me are you come in to see daddy how are you she's having a little sniff around I'm trying to get some fluffy clouds in she's knocking things over now aren't you Molly what are you doing? I know there's a couple of other paintings that um, Gainsborough did. He had, he had some bright clouds, but he also liked the, the darker patterns as well. And um, I think it mix a little bit of burned and burn, a bit of blue, a bit of dirty brown. See that colour? It's a lovely colour. Try and get a bit of this darker colour in. It's the type of effect I want. And they got quite dark down here. I'm just scrumbling this on. Using a little bit of just ordinary flow improver um, just happens to be my one make you use whatever flow improver you got to hand I just want to darken this sky off the research I've done was that he was he painted very fast and very loose um, and it's important when you copy a painting like that you get you get try and get into the mindset of the artist I don't want to lose too much of this cloud formation down here it's quite dark let's get a little bit of white in there And using the acrylics like this is very loose. Fluid application of layer upon layer. Just to get that uh, effect that I'm looking for. Because it's quite dark in this area. So I'm going to go back into a little bit more burn them. But maybe just a touch of ultramarine blue. Burned them, but that's gonna that's gonna make it quite black actually. Now, what I've noticed is this area, because it's going to be close to John's face, it's going to have to be dark, and because that's going to make his face pop. And I think that's why one of the reasons. Gainsborough may have put a darker type of cloud there coming into a slightly lighter area there I'm just playing with this 
colour. I do see a little bit of yellow poking its head out of there somewhere around about this area. Now I don't know what time of year this was actually painted because I can make a difference to the sky as well. I want to leave a little bit of my blue showing through. Um, I'm going to get myself a little blending brush and let's just softly blend that out. I want to keep a couple of the brush strokes in there. So I'm just going to bring a bit more light into that area there. A bit more light into this area. Bringing this dark colour down again. There. I'm just going to check on Molly Moose. She's lying down. What are you eating, Molly? She's not eating anything. She's okay. We got a, a darker cloud coming in here. Again, just using a little bit of flow improver. I just want to let this paint loosely fall on the canvas. Picking up some white and just merging that in. in the brush and trying to replicate um, trying to replicate oil paint as well is not easy no it's not trying to follow my brief I got my little picture down here which I'm trying to go off I want to darken this area up Before I go any further, I think what I'm going to do, um, let me just put a bit of colour in there. I'm going to bring a bit of colour in here as well. And before I go any further, what I'm going to do now is um, <laughs> put the brush down and leave well alone. What I'm going to try and do now, I think, is re-emphasize these branches again. I need to strengthen them branches up or I'm going to lose them. Okay, that's what I'm going to do. That's just done with um, burned umber, a little bit of ultramarine blue and burned umber. That's going to make me a black-ish color. I'm using a long inch a long inch, <laughs> a, long, a long short flat because I can stand away and paint in this branch again. Um, as I said, he was known for being loose and he enjoyed painting landscapes more than he actually did um, portraits on the research and the reading I've done upon it. And um, when you actually undertake a painting like this you tend to b build up a real respect for the for the artist that you were trying your best to copy and hopefully you find that <laughs> this spirit is with you 
and uh, they're talking over your shoulder and say, oh, don't do it like that one, don't do it this way. You stand back from the, the painting and you get a better perspective, a better look of the painting. Because if you get too close sometimes it can play tricks with your eye. That's not what we want in this instance. It's a gnarly old tree, this one. As I said, I'm just re establishing some trunks and things. Another thing I'll do is put a, a light wash of um, burnt ember over this again. I, I'm going to put some greens in that in. I've been just concentrating on this sky at the moment. And then we can build up. Now I was wondering what he actually had in his hand. Um, on my actual drawing, I couldn't work out what he had in his hand. I thought he had a piece of meat or something, because the dog is looking directly at that. So I presumed it was a bit of meat. But what I worked out it is is his glove, because he's got his um, he's got his hand on his old on, on his tummy by there, and it's in his shirt. So I don't know what he's got in his shirt, and he's hiding something in his shirt. But that dog certainly looks interested. So it's details like that we need to think about, and and, and we need to get into the the artist's mind. So what I'm going to do in this particular session, I think, is I'm um, just going to let that dry now again. Um, and I'm going to have to come back in. I'm going to put a coat, uh, two coats of um, burnt ember wash maybe over that. Darken that sky up, build it back up, knock it back, build it back up. Until I get that sky the way I want it to look. That's in keeping with a, a Gainsborough. In my eyes, because uh, this is my interpretation, it's not a direct copy it's my interpretation of a Gainsborough, um, but using his subject matter. And then I'm going to start working on the grass areas there, and then we can start building up. I'm going to leave John uh, until last, John and the dog. I'm going to build around everything around him, get all that in place before I can actually work on that, I think. That's the plan. Right, we've... I've... <laughs> another day. <laughs> Jason, <laughs> this is really giving me a headache. I've built this up with... <sighs> I've, I've lost count on me layers I've actually built this um, this bit, this up with now this sky and um, I'm still not happy with this one side it's still not dark enough and I'm I'm afraid to put too much burned ember in it because I don't know I, I just don't know quite what to do I'm thinking of maybe putting some storm cloud or something in now uh, the, tr the trouble i've got here now <laughs> another trouble another another pain another pain is that because uh, i built this up with so many layers and i've been using uh, glazing medium and i've been using flow improvers flow improver is an additive it's not going to help with anything else on with the paint at all except to um just basically allow it to run across the surface of the canvas it's, it's not gonna it's not gonna add to the paint then it's not gonna add to the flow of the, uh, to the structure of the paint it's just gonna help the flow of the paint across the surface so it's not adding anything whereas a, a glazing medium adds something to the paint in other words it adds a, a, adds a luster to the paint then um, it becomes more glossy or you can have a matte medium which obviously adds a matte finish to the paint. So 
there are lessons that, that I've done on these things. Now the trouble is I got a lot of glare on this, so I, I, I gotta try and angle myself because I got the lights on for the camera. Um I'm getting a lot of glare off off, off this particular painting. Now I I want to I want to be able to um video everything if I can but it's it's getting increasingly difficult for me to to be able to to do that because with the nature of this sky I can I'm just going to be repetitive now I'm I'm basically just going to be playing with colors and and and, and trying to get this right because it's quite dark around old John here so I'm just going between burnt umbers, blues, little bits of white, trying to get it look like a a realistic type of cloud formation. So I don't want to go too dark too quick, but on the other hand I don't want to go I don't want it to be over bright. I want a little bit of brightness in there. I wanted to look like as if it's a faded painting in fact. Picking up a bit of flow improver. This is filmed in such a different way to what I normally film. I'm not too worried if I put in too much white in a, a, in certain areas because it, I can still put a glaze of colour over it. To, to, to get it to where I want it to be so I, I need to lift certain areas and as I said um, earlier on on another day <laughs> um, is that this is my interpretation of, of this scene I'm not I, I decided I'm not going to copy it 100% uh, so it doesn't really matter it's, um, the thing is is trying to to undertake a painting that a master artist has done and then trying to understand the processes that maybe he went through and the problems he may have encountered in order to get the results that we are looking for or I'm looking for what I am going to do though is I'm going to get a little bit of matte medium. Now matte medium is exactly the same as gloss glazing medium. Um, I'm using a Galleria acrylic medium. There we are. Now this is a gloss one, obviously it's gloss. Um, but I've also got a matte one here, um, which I'm going to do. Now the matte, what the matte's going to do is going to dull that right back. So it's going to take that sheen off the canvas. Um, and by using that, um, I'm building up my layers, but it's going to take it's it's going to it's going to just dull it back a little bit for me for the camera and it's going to put a little bit more grab on on this because it's really shiny and slippery now and I don't really want it to be that shiny and slippery I'm trying to put a dirty cloud in here now I want to make it look as if it's a cloud but I want to make it look as if it may be one of those dirty, stormy, grey um, storm clouds that we can see. And the only way I can do that is just keep building this colour up. It's quite easy to paint it thick. If I wanted to paint thick, I want I, I could paint thick. But I I I, I work in thin layers, um, and I and I always have done. Uh, that's just the way I work, and I think I think doing it that way, you get that um, oil painting effect. I've got a quite dark area there which I need to address as well. I don't want it too dark, but I don't want it too light. So I'm I'm going in with some dark, 
and then I'm lighting it back up with some light and then, then I'm I'm adding a little bit more burnt amber, a bit more blue and getting that grey tonal effect in there it's going to look like a, like a stormy sky really there's no there's no blue showing through this section of the sky I don't want any blue now showing I just want a dark dirty looking effect of the sky now inevitably as we paint things change what's going to happen to this particular painting is is exactly what happened to it when I come in today to look at it it's its structure and its tonal value are uh, completely altered um, from when I seen it uh, last night um, it's, it's changed completely because that's what acrylics do they always dry um, uh, two shades darker in fact um, and we've got to bear this in mind this is turning into be this is turning into be a bit of a master class really I think of acrylics but it's good to share that information so just bring in a little bit of fluffy fluffy cloud in there and I just bring in these like as if it's just a little bit of light catching we spend hours literally hours and hours and hours on paintings like this and on the skies and the clouds just to get that effect not leaving much room for error really Dark in there to touch a little bit of blue showing through. Tell you what I might do. I'm just going to put a dollop of yellow on my cam on my palette. Only a small smidgen of yellow, because um, there is a tiny little bit of tiny little bit of a glow. Tiny little bit of a glow of yellow. I'm just using a little bit of flow improver and I'm just bringing a touch of yellow into these clouds and standing back and um, thinking maybe. The idea, the idea of these brushes is you can, you can paint at quite a long handle. So if you've got a long handle and your arm, you now I'm standing a good six foot away from the canvas. So I'm, I'm looking at it from a distance. Now normally when I make videos, I'm like this, and you, you don't get that. You don't get that um, perspective then of your painting, really. I think. There's going to be a bit of purpley 
violetty, it looks like a, like a brushed velvet jacket. I don't know exactly how these things were made, but it looks like a brushed velvet. It looks like a little bit of purple in there. So that's going to balance nicely with a little bit of yellow that we've got just picking up in the sky there now. And it just, it's just look as if it's, maybe the storm has passed and the sky is starting to open up and warm up. And you're getting a little bit of sun poking its head through and the clouds are looking a bit happier because they've just cried all over the landscape. And, and that's what clouds do, they cry. Yes, they do. It's not rain. Sometimes it's tears of joy, sometimes it's tears of sadness. Depends what type of day that cloud has had. I'll bring a little bit more light into these. No jet streams on this. There's no jet streams on this painting because this is in the 1700s. <laughs> so nothing flying there. Except birds in the sky. <laughs> so we've got a little bit of warmth coming into this this sky now. I'm going to pick up a bit more yellow. I'm just putting in a yellow into into here and there like that. I've got a little bit of white on my brush. Doesn't matter. I'm going to pick up a bit more flow improver. And let's scatter in a little bit of. Like as if it's a bit of sun just poking through there maybe. Just picking that up. I think what I'm going to have to do now is... Um, actually, when I got this yellow... Let's just pick up a bit of yellow. Let's just pick up this... So we're going to have a bit of light down there like that, I reckon. That's going to bring in a bit of light down there as well then, isn't it? We could have a bit of sun breaking through there, couldn't we? Now, Mr Gainsborough, this is where Clive is taking over your painting, I think. <laughs> And Clive is starting to take over Mr. Gainsborough's painting, I think. Because to me, we need to put a bit of warmth in this sky. D a little bit of warmth. bit of... bit of yellow. bit of yellow in this sky, isn't it? Yes, it's definitely, definitely the clouds have passed. The, the rain has, has come and gone. And old John is been sitting under the tree to escape that rain. And the dog has just been running around and chasing rabbits. And old John has taken five minutes and thought, well, I'm going to sit against this tree. I'm going to stay out of this shower. And it's going to pass. And he's quite happy in the knowledge that that is happening. So I don't know what Mr. Gainsborough was doing at the time. He thought he was just passing. He was just he was just passing. Thought, oh, I'll just stop and do a portrait because <laughs> they didn't have cameras in them days. <laughs> no. Okay, I'm gonna put a bit of colour in there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to leave that it 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 at that. I'm going to leave this sky at that now. I might play around with it a little bit more later on. I just need to stand back and don't rip this microphone out of my you. So I'm standing back and I need to. This is my mic lead. Yes, it's not as long as you think it is. But then again, I don't normally stand back this far with a mic on. <laughs> That's looking quite nice, actually. I just actually got my camera in my hand. 
I don't know what the exposure is going to be like on this, but it might be a little bit bright actually. Because it's set up for across the there on the tripod. But that's what I can see from where I'm standing. So it doesn't look too bad, I think. Just not looking too bad. I think I'm going to leave it at that. Now what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to use some matte medium. That's that one there. There you go, matte medium. And I'm going to, when this is dry, which will be about 20 minutes, I'm going to coat that then with this. And then I'm going to work on the the um, the mid-ground then with the trees, the church and the building. So that's going to be the next lesson. So I'll see you on that one. <laughs> we may play around with the sky a bit more. We'll just see how it looks as the things progress. I'll see you then. Bye. Nice. So grab your brush, have a great time. And don't forget to click subscribe. Visit Clive5R.co.uk